This is the Citizen Link Report. If you find our insights helpful, would you support our video efforts? $500 buys an hour of studio time. And we usually don't use a whole hour, but it covers the crew, lights, cameras, all that. That means your gift of $25 or more goes a long ways. Just click on Donate. Thanks from all of us. Two parties, two platforms, big differences. This is the Citizen Link Report. I'm Stuart Shepard along with Carrie Gordon Earl, who's our senior analyst here at Citizen Link. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Stuart. Let's talk about party platforms. What are they and what? Uh, how do they differ concerning the social issues mm -hmm. that we care about? Well, I think, Stuart, the party platforms are two of the most helpful documents you could read this election season. The party platforms are adopted by the parties. People will remember not long ago you had the Republican National Convention, you had the Democratic. Part of what they did was they adopted their platforms, and these are statements of their philosophies, their values, uh, where they stand on issues like the issues that we care about. Now, what's interesting is the delegates that vote on these platforms, many of them are candidates. So what you will find is candidates on your ballot will generally follow the platform. Uh, these are interesting documents. The Democratic platform is about 32 pages. The Republican is twice that long. It's 62. They're available online. And I just find it fascinating to sit down and read these. So it's, it's, a, it's an expression of, as a group, what they would do if they were in power and in office, but individually it may, it may vary. Your mileage may vary, as we like to say. It, it is, and that's why I think it would be interesting and important for people to read these documents, but also to vet the candidates, because you may have a candidate that belongs to one of the two main political parties, but has very different views even on some of these issues. But right. the issues that we care about, the social issues, those are articulated as well as many other issues. So it's very interesting reading, especially if you like politics. Let's get into the specifics then. Let's talk about the in light of social issues. First, the life issue. Where do they stand? Well, in the Republican platform on life, um, they have a heading called the Sanctity of Human Life. And that covers a number of different topics, including abortion. It talks about the right to life being a fundamental individual right that cannot be infringed. The Republican platform supports passage of a human life amendment. That's an element they've had for many years. They oppose public funding for abortion or giving money to groups that do or promote abortion. Uh, the same thing to not subsidize health care that includes abortion. The abortion section is actually similar to the platform that's been in the party for uh, since President Reagan since the 1980s. They have a section that they oppose euthanasia, assisted suicide, and withholding care and treatment from patients. Uh, there's a section that goes into just uh, life policy, opposing partial birth abortion, supporting laws that allow informed consent, parental involvement, uh, opposition to killing embryos for stem cell research, no federal funding for that. And interestingly, throughout that Republican document, there are references to life issues interwoven into other parts of the document. So it's, it's pretty long in that regard. And then on the other side? Uh, what the Democrats have done is primarily stuck to the issue of abortion, and they strongly and unequivocally support Roe v. Wade and a woman's right to make decisions during her pregnancy, including a safe and legal abortion, regardless of the ability to pay. Now, when they talk about Roe v. Wade, and again, this has been in their platform for a long time, that is abortion for any reason during the full nine months of pregnancy with taxpayer dollars, including your minor daughter. So that's really what Roe v. Wade stands for. They use the phrase uh, safe and legal. They dropped the phrase rare a few years ago. And again, this regardless of the ability to pay, which would be taxpayer funding, that's been in the last six platforms since 1988. That's been around a long time. And then they talk about supporting uh, destructive embryo research and funding that. All right, so very distinct differences between the two parties on the life issue. The marriage issue. The marriage issue, you find much of the same. In the GOP platform, there is a headline, a subheading called a sacred contract defense of marriage. And the Republican platform supports the definition of marriage as one man and one woman, supports the Defense of Marriage Act, which is the federal law that dictates how marriage will be defined in federal policy. It reaffirms support for a constitutional amendment on the issue of marriage. It applauds states that have voted to secure a definition of one man and one woman. And it also has a section on preserving and protecting traditional marriage that goes into some of the social science research of how kids benefit from having a married mother and father. All right, and on the other side of the coin? Uh, for the Democratic platform, they talk about the freedom to marry. Uh, they support 
the right of all families to have equal respect, responsibilities, and protections under the law. They have come out this year with support for marriage equality, which is same-sex marriage, and support that type of policy. Uh, they've also come out against federal and state constitutional amendments that would define marriage as one man and one woman, and that would include the 32 public votes that we've had on marriage. And they are calling for the full repeal of the Defense of Marriage Act. Again, that is the federal law that protects states from having to recognize same-sex marriages that are legalized in other states. And they call for the passage of the Respective Marriage Act, which would recognize same-sex marriage at the federal level. All right. Very, again, very distinct differences between the two parties, the Republicans and the Democrats. Finally, the third topic to talk about is religious freedom. I mean, it would seem like, uh, like both would have similar ideas there, do they? Well, when you think about the stories that are in the news, whether it's Obamacare or the HHS mandate, uh, the issue of religious freedom is, is large, and it is one that people are concerned about. It's a critical one. Uh, the GOP side, they have uh, references to religious freedom throughout the 62-page the document, including protection, conscience protection for individuals, organizations, hospitals so that they would not be forced to do things that would violate their conscience. They refer specifically to the forcible secularization of religious and religiously affiliated organizations, including faith-based hospitals and colleges. They refer to our country's Judeo-Christian heritage, the right of students to pray in, at public events, to have equal access. They mention the Boy Scouts, whose values are under attack, as well as religious groups that decline to arrange adoptions by same-sex couples. So they go very specifically into some of the hot issues of the day. All right, and, and what's the view from the Democrats side? Well, theirs is much more limited. Uh, they talk about in the section where they want to have same-sex marriage that they support the freedom of churches and religious entities to decide how to administer marriage as a sacred, as a sacrament without government interference. So apart from that, and one mention to um, tying religion to sexual orientation and gender identity, there isn't much in the Democratic platform on that topic. All right. So as we look through this, on the whole, there are very distinct differences. The two parties are very different. They are. And, and again, when you watch the TV ads, when you hear the sound bites and the slogans, uh, things can start to get jumbled and mixed up as far as what people believe and what they would do if elected or reelected. Uh, so I would really encourage folks to read these documents. There's a lot of literature floating around during an election year, but as an American, it's important for you to know where the two leading parties stand, where they stand on the issues that you care about so that you can vote your values. And again, these are statements by each of the parties as written by the parties that express what they would do and where they would stand. Now, we should point out that each, I mean, the Republicans and the Democrats are using the phrasing that tends to go with each of the parties. So it takes a little, as you're reading through it, you have to kind of think, okay, what are they saying here and exactly what are they getting at? But we're going to include links to each of those documents in the summary section of this video. So whether it's on YouTube or citizenlink.com, you can see that down below it'll say read the Republican uh, platform or the Democrat platform. Yes. Carrie, thank you for helping us sort through these things. Appreciate your help. Thank you, Stuart. And thank you for watching. We always appreciate hearing from you. You may write to us at mail at citizenlink.com. And uh, as always, we encourage you to pray for our nation as we all move toward uh, the election day on November 6th. Pray for clarity and wisdom for the American people as we try to decide how our values line up with the values expressed in these documents. And remember, stand tall and be heard.